Hi, my name is Cody Hosterman, and I'll be giving you a demonstration of recovering a virtual machine using VMware Virtual Volumes and the Flash Array from Pure Storage. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to do here is deploy a virtual machine from a template. So I'm going to create a whole new VM. So I'll give it a name. I'll choose my cluster. Normal stuff here. And now I'll configure my storage profiles. I want my config information to have a different protection scheme. So snapshot it every 30 days. And then I'll choose my protection group that has a 30-day protection policy. And then my data vVault, my virtual disk, I want it to be snapshotted more aggressively. So I'm going to choose it to be snapshotted as a policy every two hours instead. Because I want more point in times I can restore from. So I'll choose the protection policy there and finish the deployment. So this will go and deploy the virtual machine um, from that template onto my vVols. So this is generally pretty quick. It's just going to do some X copy if it's going from a VMFS, which it is. If it's a vVols, it's actually even faster from vVol to vVol. So the VM's been created, and we can go ahead and power it on. And we can see that the machine is booting up <coughs> um, from, from the image. So everything looks good. And the boot is complete. Yep, great. OK, so let's uh, close that up. And let's take a look at what this virtual machine looks like on the actual VVOL data store. So if we go into the VVOL data store, we'll see a folder, just like with a standard VMFS. It's very similar, right? Uh, that will show my, my VM. Right, here's all the information, right? The VMX file, the VMDK pointer files, everything like that. And so the VM looks pretty normal from that standpoint. If we look on the array, it automatically creates a volume group that represents that VM. I have a config VVOL, a data VVOL, and since it's powered on, there's a swap VVOL. If you look at my config vVol, you can see it's been added to that protection policy in my array and already has a snapshot. If I look at my data vVol inside of my volume group, aka my VM, we can see it's added into a different protection policy because I gave it a different one when I provisioned the storage policy against that VM. So the VM has been created and is indeed a vVol based VM. So let's uh, accidentally delete it. So I'll power it off. The power off process actually deletes the swap vVol. And then I'm going to right click on this virtual machine and do delete from disk. This is going to remove the VM from inventory and delete the files and remove the file references from the storage container. If we go back to my storage container, aka VVOL data store, we'll see that there's nothing there. The folder's gone and the files are all gone. If we go to my array, we see what actually happened is these, these config VVOLs, my volume group, has gone into our destroyed objects folders. And so they don't get deleted from the flash array for 24 hours. So what I'll do is recover my volume group, which is my VM, kind of object on the array. And then I can recover my volumes themselves too, the config and my data vVol. And if I can search, if it's a lot of volumes here, I can search by the VM name. Of course, I only have three. So I'm going to choose my config and my data. There's no need to restore the swap vVol. So I'll just restore the other two. As you can see, inside of this, my volume has been um, created. <clears throat> and now I'm going to restore my config vVol because VMware wipes that config vVol when you delete it. So I need to restore it from a snapshot. That's why it's important to have at least one snapshot of your config vVol. I'll refresh my vVol data store, and you'll see my folders back. If we go into that folder, we see because that config vVol has been restored from that snapshot, all the configuration files are back too, even though VMware originally deleted them. So right click on my VMVX, VMX file just like before, register new VM, choose my location, everything like that, and complete the wizard. That'll register it. Since it, see, since it was snapshotted when the VM was powered on, it's going to say, hey, was this copied or moved? I'll answer the question and say, um, yeah, indeed, it was technically cop moved, rather, um, but it's just been moved back, right? So I'll go ahead and answer that question, and the VM will continue to power on. I choose move because that way it keeps the VM the same information as it was before. If you do copy, you think it's a copy, right? <clears throat> Generate some new identifiers. And now the Windows machine is booting up. So very simple to automate this process through the Flash Array and VMware with virtual volumes. And we plan on making this even easier with plugins and other kinds of tools. Thanks for watching.